Hey, my lovely Willow Vibes tribe members. I'm Jessica from Willow Vines Intuitive Vibes, and this is part two to whatever I'm gonna name the first one because I was doing a love reading and I got interrupted by a phone call. So um, this is a continuation, and it's funny because I was just sitting down going, I hope I can get back into this energy, but I don't know. I might have to start over. So I kind of feel like within this energy, um, this love situation, someone feels like they might have to start fresh either with another person, maybe that's how you're feeling, or you're going to have like clean slate this situation if it's with someone that you were connected to before. And I do feel like you know whoever this is, it's just there's some type of distance between you guys um, emotionally or you're just not, you're not on the same page with them. Because they probably stressed you out. This person, I feel like, is worried that you're not on the same page as them because of whatever happened in the past. So it's like, I might have to start over. Hmm. For some of you, whoever this is, has put a lot of time into this connection, this relationship. Or they put a lot of time into a situation with another person and they're feeling like they're going to have to start fresh. Like, I can't keep investing in in the wrong person because um, it's not working out kind of thing. Um, I keep staring at pot. I don't know what the f that's about. There's some significance with that. And it doesn't feel like pots and pans. It feels like Mary J. Juana. <laughs> but anyways... Someone needs to start fresh, apparently. They're definitely overthinking. Um, they've been heavily thinking about this relationship. Connecting with you. We have the Knight of Cups. Yeah, this person's definitely recognizing you. And this is like a message of love. You send very loving messages. You're a very loving person, is what I just heard. And that's what they notice most about you. That's what they love a lot about you. It's not just your passions and your drive and your go-getter attitude. It's messages of love. Something to do with UPS. They're recognizing your love. That maybe if you told this person you love them, you had feelings for them or something like that in the past, they probably just thought it was a, a load of crap, you know? Maybe they thought it was love bombing stuff. Maybe you did. And now they're going, your love was real. Like, the way that you feel or the way that you felt or how you treated me, whatever you said and did, it was messages of love. It was out of love. It was all done out of love. It was all said out of love, something like that. Because I don't feel like this person's rushing in to tell you that they love you and whatever. I feel like they're seeing the potential within this situation between the two of you. I keep staring at recognition. So there's something about you and about this situation between you and this person that they did not see before. But they're seeing it now. Because there could be a different approach here. Maybe you took a different approach towards them. Or you will if you're not speaking to them right now. But I feel like they're going to take a different approach. Or they know they need to. I just heard too much too soon. So that could have been going on here. Um, maybe you came off a little strong. Or just like. feel, Kind of feeling. Like I have to make a decision. <laughs> like, I, like it's do or die. You know what I mean? And. Um, I just feel like that wasn't working in this situation. And I'm not saying that that was your intention. That could just be how this person was feeling. Like, basically, if if we don't date, then that's it. So, fuck it. That's it. Um, but I don't feel like you were coming across that way or meaning to. Because it's all about perspective. You know, you can be doing and saying certain things. And you have no idea how the other person is taking that information. Because of how they've... Um, how they've been treated in the past, you know, the types of connections they've had in the past. Maybe um, their relationships were rushed or they, they were dealing with pushy people or whatever the fuck they were dealing with. They could have been comparing when they shouldn't have been. But that's, 
you know, that's when we come from that broken place that we, when we need to work on those things and you could have reflected this back, reflected that back to this person. So now they're seeing, uh, cause this is part two. This is the second half of all of this. So this could be the, the do over part after a phone call, something starts over. There's a fresh start, whether it's with this person or in a totally new direction because there's a new perspective because there's enlightenment here. But um, I just feel like this person was listening and taking on the situation from a very outdated standpoint because there's a level of comparison here. You could have reminded them of someone they dated, their ex or whatever, someone from the past. And it's just like, Ugh, I can't go down that fucking road again, even though I want to. It's like I'm feeling this, but uh, something like that. <laughs> like I'm feeling it. I feel, I feel drawn to you. I see the potential, but what? But, but what if this goes to shit, you know? What if you turn out to be a psycho? What if, you know, <laughs> all that crap. Because someone dealt with people like that. Um, and I don't know, there's a realization here. I want more, uh, well, what's this first? We have the eight of coins. Yeah, somebody might wanna celebrate your work or there's some celebration coming up um, within their work. I, I mean, both of you could, have accolades or whatever going on, but I feel like whatever you're working on, <sighs> something to do with coins, like change and stuff. Someone could have a special coin or, I don't know, it's making me think of like a quarter or something or a half dollar or those gold coins. I don't know, there, there's a significant coin um, that somebody has, even if it's not actual currency, it could be one of those, I don't know, my grandfather used to get these coins for veterans and he spent quite a bit of money on them and whenever he'd run into a veteran, he'd give them one of those coins. It's like an appreciation thing. Um, somebody could have something like that. It might not be exactly that, but it's like a, a keepsake. There's a keepsake coin, a significant coin for someone. Um, I don't know, I just saw a bra. I a, something to do with someone's bra. <laughs> that feels separate. The coin and the bra feel separate. Um, I have no clue what the bra is about. Huh. For some reason, it's making me think of buying bras for you like your kid and shit you know when they're finally out of their training bras or they need one for the first time i i don't know what the hell that's about but there's some significance with someone's bra no matter what it is <coughs> um excuse me so anyways yeah i keep saying coin but the celebrations and work I feel like this person wants to celebrate your work. There's there's a reason to celebrate. Um, so there's a level of success here. I mean, we do have spotlight. So you could be in the spotlight or you're just being seen. You're being recognized by your boss, by a better company, by the public, by this person. I don't know. There's accolades. There's a, there's a win here. And I also feel even if you're not in the public eye or anything like that, this could even be... Um, graduating, just leveling up within your career, whether it's furthering your education and finally succeeding at that or um, just moving on up. I, I want to celebrate this. But I also feel like whoever this person is, you probably could have encouraged them to make steps, to, to take the steps necessary for them to succeed in work as well. So you were very, very encouraging. You were very supportive. Like, like, you got this, you know, it might take time because the eight of coins can represent time as well. But it's like, it might take time to achieve your goal, to get through whatever this process is, especially if we're talking business. Um, but your hard work is going to pay off. There will be a reason to celebrate.
I just heard you're worth my time. I don't want you to think that you're not worth my time. That I don't want... That I don't want to spend time with you because I do. I feel like I'm going to cry. You are worth my time. That's what I keep hearing in my head. It's almost like someone's saying it over and over and over. Like, I do enjoy talking to you, spending time with you. I want this or something. You're important, you know? But it, it sounds like, because I'm feeling lightheaded all of a sudden, and sometimes that that happens when spirit comes through and it's almost like somebody's chanting that over and over in their mind like you're worth my time you're worth it you're worth my time they could be trying to send you telepathic messages like does this fucking work <laughs> kind of thing um but this is about time it's about time that somebody sees something it's about time that this works out you deserve this win you deserve this love you deserve this connection you are deserving of love. You deserve to be fucking happy. This almost feels like I'm having a conversation with someone, like I'm telling them, you know, like, you deserve these things. You deserve to have a fulfilled life, with or without me, which is love, I'm just saying, because if you truly love someone, you're not going to push them into making any decision or doing anything you're gonna allow shit to happen and you'll still support them this way or that way you'll it's like yes I would love for this to work but if it doesn't I want you to be happy and I know you'll be successful you know you deserve whatever brings a smile to your fucking face that's what this feels like which those are messages of love I'm just seeing when you're encouraging someone like that that's very loving and this person could have been in their ego and that's why they were a bit blocked off just because I feel, I don't want to say I feel scared of love. I, I want to say I almost, I feel like through heartbreak and pain and whatever ha past shit, whoever this person is or you, but whoever this person is, they built their walls so fucking high because they vowed to never get suckered in again, to never get hurt again. And they almost feel like, I don't know if I know how to love. I don't know if I can love again. Because they shut their heart chakra down. So when you do that, you don't come from a very loving place. You know what I mean? So if you're showing all this love and affection to somebody who's in that space, they're not going to see it that way. They're going to see it as, whoa, you know? back up, you know, move, bitch, get out the way, kind of, <laughs> kind of energy, you know what I mean? Oh my gosh. All right, um, before I move on to the next one, I want a little bit more on this Knight of Cups. <coughs> I just heard I love your work, so there's someone who they love your work. And I started this reading off with that. They could have fallen in love with you because of your work or through your work. Um, no matter what that work is, but it would be seen if it's something. It's it's not show-off energy. It's people see what you do for some of you. And I love what you do. I love what you do a little too much is what I just heard. So there's someone who might pay very close attention to um, to you at work. I don't know if it's a co-worker or what. Those flew over there, but what's it? To my masculine, this is a man. <laughs> or masculine energy. I don't know. I just wanted to start singing men in fucking tights. <laughs> but anyways, um... Men in tights, tights, tights. Masculine energy. This person was strongly in their masculine energy and they just weren't allowing the feminine energy to come through, whether they're a man or a woman. But I do feel like this is coming. It's come from the masculine side. I'm just going to fucking leave it there. Put it where it fits. Um, and you, your emotions were too deep for this person because they weren't open to it. But I kind of feel like this person's open to it now. They're opening up to it. Because they're definitely not wide open, just saying. 
You ignited something within them. So you probably lit the spark within this person for them to see what they need to see for themselves. In ter and in turn, it is drawing them towards you. Yeah, a little this chemistry because I just heard in my head, I love everything about you. It's almost like there isn't a fucking flaw that I've seen or heard or witnessed or whatever that would make me not. Like, your flaws aren't even flaws because they ain't that fucking bad. And I'm not talking physical flaws. Like, I feel like that wouldn't even, that wouldn't even matter to you or them. So, like, for example, with physical flaws, you know, I had a C-section because I had two of them. I had two kids. That's how I had had them. So I got mom belly, no matter how much weight I lose, you know what I mean? And that used, to, I used to be very insecure about that. Like, I don't want to look at myself in a mirror, none of that shit, you know? Oh, is that, I think he's, one of them's waking up, but they're not crying yet. So anyways, um, like, I don't know, there was, I had some insecurities and I was kind of like, hmm, about certain things, but I'm not anymore because the right person isn't going to care. They're going to love me no matter what. And it could be as simple as, you know, if you're balding a little bit or you have a scar somewhere that's noticeable or a birthmark that's um, quote unquote unsightly to you, uh, like you think that of, of whatever this is, or you got bad teeth, you know, whatever it is, there's some type of issue that somebody has that they might have been concerned about, like, like I'm not good enough. But this person doesn't think like that about you at all. Like they don't even care about any of those flaws. And I don't feel like you care either. It's all in somebody. It's just how some an individual feels. Because whoever this is, is very drawn to you. But anyways, because they're getting cranky. And I knew this was going to happen. And I knew I was going to get interrupted again. Uh, so there could be a lot of interruptions in this situation between the two of you or that's just kind of how it went when you were dealing with them we have commitment and breaking point with the knight of cups um feeling overwhelmed commitment overwhelms this person or they were feeling that's what i said they were feeling overwhelmed over this commitment over committing to you at one point like now or never do or die you know that kind of thing like if I don't commit to you now, I never can. Uh, I don't know. Someone was feeling very pressured. But I feel like they're viewing that very differently now because you're not, you weren't trying to, to pressure them. They were just, they were just feeling on the wire for whatever reason. I don't know what it was, but I feel like this person wants to commit to you. And they're having a really hard time holding back now. Like... Like, yeah, I, I think I want to try. I want to see what these are. Hold on. Ugh, I'm fucking nosy right now. Confessions. <laughs> what did I just say? Yeah. Somebody wants to confess something. I don't know if you've already confessed whatever about, like, hashed out the past with this person. Or if they did with you. Or if that's coming up. It might be coming up. But, um, something had to have been said. Excuse me. Something had to have been said. Raw. Somebody was being raw and real. But anyway, something had to have been said to make this person see, to, to have their eyes open up. <coughs> There's a raw message. This is like straight into the fucking point. You know, like... I don't know, there's a message that was sent that opened somebody's eyes. That this isn't a fantasy. This is reality. Could be about being clean, you know, like, no matter what the hell that is. Um, you know, clean of STDs, you're not a dirty, you're not a dirty hoe. <laughs> so you could be thinking of the cat in the hat. But anyways, um... Or clean of substances and stuff like that. But regardless. Raw. Okay. Daydreaming, imagining, fantasizing. I'm not fantasizing about you. 
You're not my fantasy. Maybe you're gonna tell someone that or or they are or they did. But I don't know, fantasy is like a dreamland. Like it's all make believe, it's made up. And it feels like there's some confession here, some information that is true. It's not all in someone's head. It wasn't, yeah, the light just flashed. It wasn't make believe, it isn't make believe. So whatever you're doing and saying is true. We'll just leave it at that. I don't know what, 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 what hmm. I can't talk now, sheesh. <laughs> I don't know what it's all about, but I just heard I meant what I said. So if there's a past message or recent, whatever, if there's a message that somebody's reviewing or reading, yeah, it's reviewing that flashed again. Um, what you said is it was true. Like you meant what you said. I don't feel like, I feel like the masculine might be looking at something. I'm trying to figure something out. My hands are ice cold right now. Gosh, I feel like I've been like holding snowballs or some shit. Spirit. God, I love him so much. My son is awesome. He's so helpful. I'm just saying, like, I was going to cut this reading short because interruptions, because Link woke up. I'm telling you, he fights his naps like crazy. It drives me bananas. It's like 15-minute intervals, sometimes half hour. But then he'll get so tired that he'll conk out for a couple hours. But I was trying to get him to take a nap so I could come up and do this. And <coughs> I finally got him asleep. And while I'm trying to rock him, friggin' heroes on his play mat like getting fussy. He wasn't screaming. He was just kind of whining. And then all of a sudden he stopped and I look over and he passed out. He's sleeping on his toy mat right now. I'm like, all right, you're good. And Logan heard Link crying and he knows I'm doing a reading. So he, he's standing there rocking him in front of the TV. It was so sweet. So, because that's making me feel like helpful energy because that's why I said that I love him so much I mean I love him anyways he's my son but he's very helpful your help is appreciated so this person could appreciate all the help that you've shown them or you appreciate their help in a situation the world there's some type of well, there's some type of coming together online, I'm going to say, because what I was going... <sighs> what I was going to say was there's enlightenment online. So these could be online messages or posts or some someone seeing something online. You revealed something online. Uh, you, you, yeah, you revealed something online. You showed somebody something online, whether you directly showed them or you just delivered information on the internet, no matter what that is, this person saw the light because of what you said online, because of something online. I'm almost done. Actually, I'll take one of these. Give me more on the world. Ooh, I just got dizzy. The beach could be significant. I don't know if it's significant to the two of you or just the beach. 
not your typical love story reversed. A typical love story? Well, then that'd be the opposite. What? Yeah, I saw that. So, oh yep, I see him. All right, I'll be done in a minute. I'm I'm pretty much at the at the end, anyways. Because <laughs> he's realizing he's still on the mat. Like, fuck, <laughs> I'm not in my swing. Anyways, um, I want one more because it's making me think of it's not your typical love story, but it's typical. Which would be like everything, like everyone else. It's all the same. Something's expected of another person. Like I wouldn't expect anything less from you or of you. Okay. Why? So you're definitely not expecting anything from this person. And if they do want to come in with some type of love offer or just kindness, um, you're not expecting it. This person could have thought that you just say that shit to everyone. Like you're just caring. And so it's like, yeah, there's no different that you're talking to me that way because you, you tell everyone that kind of thing. Um, but... I just heard I'm giving back my love. Wouldn't it be I'm getting back my love? No, I'm taking back my love. I'm giving back my love. Okay, so if you took your love away from this person, if it's something ended between you and them, I feel like you'll return the love. Like, as long as something changes, you'll give back the love. Like... So basically that saying you still, you still have feelings for whoever this is, or they could develop if the circumstances were right, or the, if, if all the elements come together in the right way, you know what I mean? Stuck at a crossroad, major intersection, learning, mastering a karmic lesson and love drought. Yeah, you took your love away from this person. And that was part of the lesson. And that's probably how they saw whatever this is. Like, like I thought, I thought when you love someone, you always love them. How, how the fuck do you take your love back? You know what I mean? But, yeah, so this is someone that you probably said that you cared about. You, you wanted to, um, you know, you wanted to date them. Or you did. It feels like you wanted to. So you were being very loving. And then you stopped. And that's part of the lesson here for them. Because you get what you give. So in order for you to give your love back, they need to show love to you. That's, that's exactly what this is. Boom. Mic drop. I saw that so <laughs> anyways yeah that's really cool actually so something that you were daydreaming about thinking about heavily like in love land this person situation this commitment um if it just seemed like a fucking pipe dream I feel like someone's finally coming out of fantasy land that could be why you took your love back. Like, yeah, I'm coming out of fantasy land. I can't think about this shit no more. And that opened their eyes. But I feel like something's coming into reality because of a confession. Someone's going to actually bring information to you. Like, directly to you. This doesn't feel like, oh, I'm just going to click on the internet. And, oh, I got all the information I need. I feel like there could be some eye-opening experiences on the web or whatever. No matter where that information is coming from that's got someone heavily thinking, but this person's going to directly speak to you. Yeah, that's really cool. I really like this. Um, I'm just going to pull one more and then go downstairs and tend to the bubbers. Thank you. 
excuse me. They're more lively now, too, and they laugh and squeal and giggle and coo and do all that fun stuff. Little chatterboxes. Hero really is a chatterbox. That kid never shuts up, just saying. But he, uh, Link is starting to talk more now, too. I just want one card. One card. One Sweet Day. Isn't that a song by Mariah Carey? Which, is that about? No, she has a song called Fantasy. One Sweet Day. I don't remember which one that one is. I don't know. I don't really listen to Mariah Carey, but it popped in my head. Is that the death one? Where, like, there's a collaboration of artists because they were singing, was it for, like, Tupac or something? No. I don't know. They were singing for some for some celebrity that died. Uh, Bridge. You're on the right track. Because someone's going to open up. Yeah, opening up. <laughs> They're going to open up emotionally. This person's opening up emotionally. You could have opened up emotionally to this person or you're going to, but I feel like they're... Spare? I want to spare your feelings. I want to despair your feelings. So, I don't know, someone doesn't want to hurt you or they didn't want to hurt you. But I feel like... Yeah, somebody's going to open up emotionally because they're following in your footsteps. They're following your lead. They're taking your lead. I just heard, meet me at the bridge. Uh, I don't know what the bridge is, but it's making me think of a dream that I had where there's a bridge in the cemetery. And in the beginning of the dream, it was a pretty bridge. You know, it was all painted white and whatever. And it was this kind of like, whoo, like one of those long ones that goes over a river. And it was a small one though. And it said at the beginning, um, it said, path to pure happiness. And it was through a cemetery. So spirit, the dead, things like that. But anyways, this cemetery... Uh, I actually know where it is in real life, and <laughs> he's making noises at Link. Anyways, um, sorry, I'm getting distracted. <coughs> Maybe somebody was distracted and didn't cross the fucking bridge, but <clears throat> regardless, in the dream, it said, <clears throat> path to pure happiness, and I crossed the bridge just like, doo -doo 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 -doo. I just saw an orb. And went to the other side, and it was just a bunch of houses. No, was, there was nothing there. And I'm like, what? Well, what the hell? <laughs> this isn't happiness. There's nothing there. So it's almost like when you try to connect with a person, and you feel like it's going to work out really well, and you get excited, and then um, your feelings weren't spared because you realize that there's nothing there. Like, that they don't care. It's not reciprocated or whatever. It's kind of what I'm getting from that dream. And then it was, I think I was walking around and I ended up circling back to the bridge. And um, this time, because it was at the end of the dream, this time it was all dilapidated and, and it was falling apart and shitty and it looked scary. And I remember I didn't want to cross it because I was like, what if I fall through? But then in the dream, I got thinking, I'm like, it's hollow ground. This is a fucking cemetery. I ain't gonna drown if I fall through because there's no water there. There's no emotion there. So it's... And then I crossed it. And I don't... I think I woke up right as I was crossing the bridge. So I don't really know what happens on the other side of that right now. At least from the dream standpoint. But it's like... It's almost like having... Taking a chance, being disappointed. And then there's an opportunity to take a chance again, but it's kind of scary because you were disappointed by that person before or by 
people in general. It's like, I always get hurt. This isn't going to be my happiness. This happiness isn't for me kind of thing. Like, look at that. That ain't going to work. Like, look at the situation. This isn't good. How the fuck would this work? Like, you know what I mean? And then you go, well, it seems there's no emotion here, especially if it's dealing with the same person. Like, um, the lovey-dovey feelings, you took your love back. If that's gone or was never there on your end, their end, or whatever, it's not as scary because you're going to hit the ground, which is solid. You know, so... So you won't get hurt. Because it wasn't very far off the ground. The bridge wasn't just seeing. But anyways, um... Yeah, it's like even if you fall, it's not going to be that... Even if you fall, you're not going to fall that hard. It won't hurt. Even if you fall, it won't hurt. So even if it doesn't work out, it won't hurt because the emotions aren't there anymore. Not saying that they can't return because I don't know what's on the other side of the bridge yet. Maybe you're starting to cross the bridge and that's why I'm saying meet me at the bridge. Could be a literal bridge, like maybe somebody wants to meet you at a fucking bridge, but this feels like bridging the gap. Meet me halfway. Or, or that's advice from spirit. Like you need to meet this person halfway or they need to meet you halfway. <laughs> I just heard, don't worry, the water will come. So the feelings will, will come eventually. I don't know, something like that. But I gotta go. But I love you guys and I will talk to you real soon.